Welcome back to Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube channel. I'm Stuart Lee, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use Google Classroom in 10 minutes or less. It'll be a quick tutorial. I'm not gonna show you everything in it, but I am gonna show you how to get started with Google Classroom so you can be using it this afternoon or even tomorrow. Okay, so we come up to a blank screen. I'm opening incognito right now because I actually have uh, several Google accounts logged in, so I'm gonna show you from scratch how to get into Google Classroom, create a class, and create an assignment. So we're gonna go to classroom.google.com. Just like every other Google product, uh, Google Classroom is the tool.google.com. So we're going to sign in, and I'm gonna use my work account because I have a lot of classes in there and I can show you some stuff. So there we go. And once you get signed in uh, with a G Suite account, you, you could use a personal account, but if you're not using your G Suite that you're using for school, uh, that your students are using, then it's not gonna work as smooth. So make sure you use your school account to do this. And so you see a whole bunch of, of classrooms that I'm either in or I'm the teacher or I'm the co-teacher of uh, populated here. You may see some with an accept and a decline. Uh, if you see that, that is because your district has set up Google Classrooms already for you based off of PowerSchool or whatever uh, LSM that you guys may be using. Uh, so let's just pretend that we're starting from scratch. We don't have any preset ones. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna click the plus. Uh, just like a lot of other Google products, pluses are your friends, so we're gonna click the plus. And here we can join a class. If we're gonna join a class, we need a class code, and that's what you're gonna give to your students once we create this class. But you can join a class as a teacher, um, or you can create a class. So we're gonna create a class, and we're gonna name this uh, Mr. Lee Teaches Tutorial, if I can spell, uh, class. And you don't have to put a section. Uh, you, you can if you want. If you teach three sections of the same thing, you can number them. Uh, and that's totally up to you. It won't make any difference. You don't have to put a subject either. Uh, if you want to keep it organized, if that's for you, then go ahead and put a subject. But that doesn't make any difference to Google uh, either. So we're gonna go ahead and create the class. And it's gonna take a second to process because it's gonna create all the different aspects of the class that you're gonna need. And so it gives you some default background. You can always change that uh, by selecting the theme. You can upload a picture of your class. A lot of teachers will like to take a group picture of their class and upload it, and that way they can identify the students in the class by sight, and they don't have to worry about names and stuff uh, for the classroom. But this is what your, your blank canvas will say. So you got your stream. This is where all of your assignments go. At the top, you have your students. This is where all of your students will be. It gives you the join code. Now, it is case sensitive, but I don't ever see capital letters in Google Classroom join codes. Uh, I could be wrong on that, and maybe just I've never seen one, uh, but this, this join code would be 1JBHON, all lowercase. So a student would go in and click the plus that we clicked to create the class. They would click that plus and click join class and then they'd put in this code and then they would populate here. So it'll pull in their name, their email address and all that if you're using the same uh, G Suite account, um, your district account or whatever. So once we get our students in here, we can also invite them via email, but this is kind of labor intensive and you can't really just do multiple ones at the same time. So uh, I typically skip this and have them physically type in this address. It's so much faster, it's so much easier. Under your about, you, we can put uh, class materials, we can put the syllabus, we can put my contact information, we can put my schedule, we can put a lot of the stuff that you would normally put on a website uh, for reference material here. We can also upload our notes here. This page will never change. However, this page cannot be assignments. And so any kind of reference material, list of websites, uh, class notes, um, video tutorials, anything like that, this would be a good place for those things, the about page. And you just give it a title and you can link an attachment, a Google Drive object, uh, a YouTube video, or a link to a website or to another document or something like that. Uh, so let's go back to stream and we're gonna go down here to our plus button and when we mouse over our plus button, we get creating an announcement 
which is literally just that. It just makes an announcement. And anything you put into your stream, your students will get an email notification saying that your teacher has put X, Y, or Z into the stream as an assignment, as an announcement, that kind of thing. Also, if they have the mobile app on their phone, they'll get a pop-up notification um, on their phone about any kind of changes you've made to the stream. So we can create an announcement, and if we do that, we can attach things to the announcement. It lets us just say stuff to the students. We can't ask for anything to be turned in, um, so it's just an announcement. But we can't attach things to the announcement. If we want to actually create an assignment, this is where we can give it a title, we can give our students instructions, we can set a due date, we can add a topic. Topics are just tags. So if you're covering Unit 1 and you want to create a topic called Unit 1, if you tag everything from Unit 1 as Unit 1, then on the left we'll be able to go over here where it says Topics, if you can see that, and we can click Unit 1 and then it'll only pull up everything from Unit 1 or only everything from Unit 2. So it's a way to organize your assignments and your announcements. But we can do the same thing. We can do uh, an attachment, a Google Drive object, a YouTube video, or a link to something. So let's give it a title, test one. We're going to attach something from my Google Drive. Um, whatever this is. And now we have an option. Students can view the file, students can edit the file, or make a copy for each student. If students can view the file, that means the students can only look at the file. They can't do anything with it. They can make a copy for themselves, but they can only look at it. Students can edit the file would be where all of the students who have access to it can go in and edit the same document. So if you wanted to do an introductory uh, Google Slides where you know everybody gets their own slide and they introduce themselves to the class through that Google Slide, that would be a great option for that. Make a copy for each student is typically what I see teachers using because that will take whatever document you've shared, create a copy automatically for that student, and put the student's name in the title of the document. And so that way, if you're giving out note-taking sheets, if you're giving out a study guide, um, things like that, they'll have their own copy that they can edit and work on and then also it'll have their name at the top so if they forget to put their name on it Google fixes that for you and then they can turn it in through that same document uh, it gives them the option to, to turn in once done so they don't actually have to come back into Google Classroom to turn it in they can do it through that created document now that only works with Google Docs that doesn't work with Word files or PDFs or anything like that um, that's for an, a topic for another video but then we can either assign it we can schedule it, so if we want it to go out tomorrow morning at 8.30, we can schedule it for that. Or we can save it as a draft, come back and work on it again later. So we can plan many, many assignments ahead of time by saving it as a draft or going ahead and scheduling it, and the students don't see it until we want them to see it. So once we're all done, uh, we can select all of our students, but if I had students in this class, I could select individual students. So if I needed to differentiate my lesson and give certain students one worksheet and certain students another worksheet, uh, that's totally possible through Google Classroom. And you don't have to worry about one group seeing what the other group has because only the students that get that assignment get the notification, get to see it in the stream. Everybody else gets to see their stuff. Um, that'll make sense when you have uh, students in there and you can see. So if we click Assign, takes a second but then it shows up here and the instructions would be here the document is here uh, you have a done and a not done the students would go in here I am in a classroom that I'm a student in so I will click on an assignment and then once I'm done I can with the assignment I can add it to my work um, I can create it from this, so if I wanted to create the document and, and do the work there. And then once I'm done, once I've turned in what I need to do or done what I've been assigned, I mark it as done. And once I mark it as done, then the teacher will see a one in the done column. You'll see however many students it's been assigned to in the not done column until they mark it as done. Now, does this affect the grade at all? No. If you set a due date when you make the assignment, can they still turn it in after the due date? Yes, they can, but the document will be marked late. If they turn in an assignment and they decide they can't, or they want to redo the assignment, they go back into the assignment itself and they can unsubmit the assignment. Then they can edit it again and turn it back in. If it's before the due date, 
it's fine. If it's after the due date, they will get the late mark on it. But again, that doesn't affect anything other than it notifies you that they turned it in after you said it was due. So real quick in a nutshell, that's how to use Google Classroom today, not even tomorrow, today to make an assignment. I hope you find this tool useful. If you find this video useful, give me a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. Leave a comment below and tell me how you use Google Classroom, if you use it in creative ways or if you're just getting started, uh, feel free to ask me questions in the comments and maybe as a community we can help you get through this and it's a wonderful tool. Um, if you like my content, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and that way anytime I release a new video, which is usually Mondays and th Fridays and every now and then Wednesdays, uh, you'll be notified if you're a subscriber. So thanks and have a great day.